everybody. Today we're going to talk about mushroom culture. What is a mushroom? Where does it come from? And how has it been used throughout history? So today we're going to learn a little bit about the origins of fungi and mushrooms and where this magical organism actually comes from. There's a lot of different theories about the nature of fungus, how it works, where it comes from. Some of them range from what is called panspermia, where spores and fungus come to earth in a meteorite or a comet. Some other ideas talk about, you know, the primordial soup, how fungus evolved um, as maybe one of the first cell organisms with a nucleus. And then there's a lot of theories about fungi being either a byproduct of plants or that plants are a byproduct of fungus. You know, and the, the archaeological evidence, the fossils, and the theories, not all of them are very concrete so far. The first plants we know of in the fossil record are called bryophytes. They include mosses, hornworts, and liverworts. They appear around 740 to 425 million years ago and have been known to be mycorrhizal. What's unique about bryophytes is they reproduce with spores, just as fungi do, not with seeds. So in all honesty, they could just be the first fungi that decided to turn into a plant, not the other way around. Lichens are a symbiotic association between fungus and photosynthetic partners such as algae or cyanobacteria. Lichens have been known to not only survive harsh conditions, including radiation and extreme temperatures, but there have been experiments where they've survived simulated Martian surface conditions, including the Martian atmosphere, Martian minerals. One of the things that's really talked about, especially in the mushroom industry and mushroom world, is basically the, the side shoots of culture. We have agriculture and permaculture, um, which is where uh, culture gets its subsidiaries from and in, in the word uh, permaculture it's somewhat the ecological explanation of how nature works how nature is regenerative and how nature recycles itself and uh, plants and animals how they interact with each other in nature how there is a, an ecosystem that is intertwined and and works symbiotically humans have changed that into what we call agriculture. Agriculture is sort of the root of human civilization over the last few thousand years. It is the art and science of growing plants, animals, fungi, and other things we want and need using supply and demand, getting those organisms to grow in an efficient way where we can use them to our advantage. And agriculture sometimes conflicts with permaculture, but they're all rooted in what is called culture, the way humans do things. And modern culture is heavily reliant on agriculture and less reliant on permaculture, especially in the Western world and the Eastern world. It's only the indigenous societies that really have their roots still in what is called permaculture. There aren't Neanderthals and nomads wandering around uh, depending on nature anymore, especially on Earth. Um, the entire planet has been engulfed in the civilization of agriculture and monocrops, growing one crop by itself specifically for a purpose instead of interacting crops with each other the way they do in nature and interacting fungi with plants, mycorrhizal, and interacting animals with plants and fungi in a way where there's feces and fur and feathers and claws and bone that all feed the soils, that feed the plants and get recycled by the fungi. This permaculture system is probably going to become more popular in the future and will end up competing efficiently some of the history in the Bible really discusses mushroom use and mushroom culture. Um, that could even be said that uh, the mana, the, the substance that grew out of the rocks on the desert floor, is what fed the Israelites as they wandered through the desert with Moses. 
no one really knows if that was a fungus or if it was what fungus it could have been um, could be something like lion's mane or could be something like a lichen but it was a white substance that grew on the rocks of the desert after the night and the moisture and that sounds a lot like a, a mushroom to me so we can think that the bible and the history of religion from the quran the torah the gnostic texts all the versions of the bible there are plenty of historical expressions of mushroom and fungi and that could even be said for things like christmas and santa claus that could also be said like things um, and indigenous cultural use of mushrooms where a lot of our folklore and heroes and monsters and folk tales come from mushrooms are probably rooted in a lot of human stories and they not only give humans the ideas of connecting to nature but they've also given humans um, a, a, a way to pass down knowledge of nature so another important part of fungus and culture is its actual use in history by different cultures. We have a lot of history and art and religion and science based around very large cultures, whether they were Roman or Greek, the indigenous nations of the world, uh, the Persians, Samaria. We have a lot of ancient cultures that used mushrooms, talked about mushrooms, um, put mushrooms in their architecture of their buildings, their art. Um, mushrooms were expressed in a lot of religious texts and ritual use by different cultures around the world. But mushrooms are obviously a very important piece of human history. They're probably some of the first things that were written about besides for math besides for food and the basic human elements of life and death mushrooms have pretty much been there since humans have been writing the viking berserkers and norsemen used liberty cap mushrooms but the vikings also enriched their mead honey wine with the fly agaric or the hemanita mascara mushroom this is the same mushroom that gets associated with Santa Claus. That's where he gets his outfit from. The Anamita mushroom is also associated with the Christmas tree, the pine tree. Uh, that's why we put red wrapped presents under the Christmas tree. It's also where the reindeer flying myth comes from because reindeer actually eat Anamita mushrooms. They actually enjoy it. To me, some of the most interesting things about mushroom and, and human culture is how they're expressed in movies and TV. Now, recently we have a TV show which comes from a book, a movie, a video game called The Last of Us and it is probably the first zombie story where it's not a virus that causes human beings to turn into these horrendous flesh-eating monsters but it's a fungus and it kind of focuses in on the cordyceps fungus or potentially the ergot fungus where LSD is derived from. The, the cordyceps fungus is actually the, the fungus that interacts with insects. It not only turns insects into zombies but it uses their flesh as a body to spread the spores wherever the insects are overpopulating an area of nature. And so we have kind of this scary mycophobia, as they call it, the fear of mycology, the fear of mushroom in, in our culture. And we, you know, make movies and video games. A great book, series, TV show um, is The Expanse, which I'm a big fan of. And it's about a couple hundred years from now where humans have migrated to Mars, the moon, and the asteroids throughout um, the asteroid belt, different moons of Saturn and, and Jupiter, and they've expanded through the solar system. And there's the protagonist, they call it the proto-molecule, which an alien civilization sent to uh, basically eat 
the Earth in an asteroid, Phoebe, um, this one of Saturn's moons, and it gets stuck and stays around Saturn so it doesn't end up hitting the Earth. And humans end up manipulating this protomolecule and releasing it, and it almost acts like a fungus where it biodegrades organic material, takes apart things, but one of the most interesting things to me, because um, my work here at Microsoft is about understanding mycelium as a technology, as a material, as an electrical circuit-like material, as a decomposing material, and as a builder of chemical elements, taking things apart and putting them back together. So mycelium to me is a, is a very important piece of technology, biotechnology, that we're barely learning. And this, uh, this series, The Expanse, kind of is the first time I've ever seen um, fungal-like things expressed as a biological computer and networked organism and something that actually takes things apart and rebuilds them to something more. So uh, we only have so many examples of art in movies and TV shows that actually showcase uh, the potential of fungus as a conscious machine-like thing. In culture and history, it's mostly been rooted around food, medicine, and psychedelia. Um, changing the brain, eating, and basically dying. Uh, mushrooms have a, a very strong cultural representation of death, decomposition, and the afterlife. Um, in Europe, we have a very Western view of fungus is that it's scary and maybe bad and evil and associated with paganism and, and witchcraft and the devil. And in indigenous cultures, it's got a very spiritual nature to connecting you to beyond the material world. Um, psychedelic mushrooms, um, the, the abundance of chemicals in mushrooms that can give you a psychedelic experience. Those mushrooms have been used by many cultures, especially indigenous cultures for years, as ritual tools. Another thing is the historical use of mushrooms as materials. Um, maybe the, the first Neanderthals used mushrooms as clothing, as materials to set fires and store an ember in their pocket, so they basically had a mushroom as a lighter so they could light fires all the time. Um, they were also used as um, tools to heal, band-aids, tools to prevent infection. Mushrooms have a, a lot of similarities immune system-wise to animals. Um, they don't like bacteria, so they fight off bacteria. And if it wasn't for penicillin being discovered, a fungi that grows the penicillin, um, Americans might have lost World War II because of bacterial infection. It's the fungus that protects us and is used as antibiotics to fight off bacteria. And um, we have plenty of good bacteria that helps humans, but um, mushrooms have learned over their entire evolutionary existence how to protect themselves from bacteria, from virus, from other animals, um, the poisons and the substances they make, uh, prevent other fungus from eating their food, prevent uh, viruses and bacteria from harming them, and sometimes the psychedelic substances that we use in, in cultural terms, uh, part of our human existence to grow our brains or to learn a little bit, um, those substances are made by the fungus to like prevent animals from eating them, and they're not necessarily uh, created by the mushroom for us. Um, can't anthropomorphize a fungus. Uh, the fungus is not there for humans. It's, it doesn't do everything for us. We've just learned how to use it.